Tension. The word you're looking for is tension. Damn, I'm loving this show. G'day, welcome to the Nerdy Dad channel and my discussion of the fourth episode of Andor, Aldani. Aldani was directed by Susanna White. There's no action to speak of this week, but man have White, Gilroy and co ramped up the tension to an 11, both in Aldani and on Coruscant. We have stakes, we have a ticking clock, and I am loving this show. Look, I only wish that we got three episodes this week like we did last week, so that we can get a resolution to the story arc that they've set up so brilliantly. Okay, so let's talk details. We're going to go spoilers in three, two, one. And I don't know what's better. The scenes on Aldani with Andor, the scenes on Coruscant with Luthan and Mon Mothma, or the scenes in Coruscant with the ISB. But I'm going to start by diving into the ISB. There are so many deliciously dense scenes to talk about. But last week, I said I wanted to know what happened to this guy. And now we know. And what about the dialogue in this scene? It took the combined ingredients of idiocy, ineptitude and total disengagement for this farce to have reached the full apex of incredulous disaster. I had to look this actor up, but Ben Bailey Smith as Lieutenant Supervisor of Venice is absolutely chewing up the scenery here. And in an episode with so much to talk about, this might be my favourite scene. Look, I'm throwing it open here. Why don't you let me know what your favourite scene was in the comments? These guys are reporting to a transfer station. The question is, where are they transferring to? I mean, are they just being kicked off world? Or are they transferring into Imperial ranks? I mean, that doesn't seem likely, given the monumental cock-up that just happened. But in interviews, it was revealed that Khan and Deidre end up working together at some point during the series. And speaking of Deidre, I didn't realise, although I should have from the white uniforms, that this scene from the trailer was the Imperial Security Bureau, the ISB. It's going to be so much fun seeing this organisation in live action. And they really are the appropriate big bad for a spy thriller. I was eating up everything about them. Their headquarters, the way they operate, Look, I'm a sucker for interesting buildings, and this building is definitely interesting. Look, it's just getting so juicy getting a better look at this face of the Empire. Deidre has no doubt done horrible things to get where she is, but all I see is somebody who's career-driven, maybe a little too ambitious. Nothing that would be a bad thing in any organisation where it isn't intelligence for a dictatorship. Staying on Coruscant, or maybe briefly moving to the space just outside of Coruscant, I loved Luthen's change of appearance, and his change of mannerism for that matter. The conversation with Mon Mothma was tense and charged, as she reminds him that she is in many ways uniquely vulnerable in all of this. Her declaration of the Rebel Alliance happens in the third season of Rebels, so we're probably still a couple of years out from her going on the run. However, this show reminds us just how close that was the whole time. Also, her husband is either willfully ignorant an idiot, or both. Was it a marriage of convenience? Otherwise, what the hell did she see in him? Obviously, whatever it was, it hasn't been shown to us yet, because from what the showrunners have shown us, he is really something. The other thing I want to know with Mon Mothma is, who are they bringing into the Inner Circle? Is it Bail or Garner? I'm going to assume Bail is already in the Inner Circle. So is it Saw? It'd be very interesting if she is the one to introduce Saw to the Alliance. Okay, the show's called Andor, so I'd better talk a bit about Andor. I'm sure what's happening on Aldani is the main thrust of the arc. It's also where I'm certain all the action's going to be later on. Despite clearly needing the extra manpower, no one is happy to have Andor, operating under the pseudonym of Clem, dropped on them at the last minute. Vel Sartha wasn't happy when Luthen uh, dropped him on her. Nor is the team very happy with the late addition when she brought him in. He's forced to get up to speed very quickly, and he hasn't proven his worth to anyone yet. Andor's main role at the moment in this episode seems to be as our point of view character. He has to be brought up to speed quickly, and the Rebels have to explain everything to him. Therefore, they're explaining everything to us. Um, this is necessary, and I never get this word right, exposition. And if the first arc's anything to go by, we're going to see payoff for the exposition in the next two episodes. 
And given the way these arcs are structured, I'm sure this is going to feel like a very, very long wait until the next episode. But hey, in reality, it's only a week away. So I hope you join me then to discuss the next episode of the season. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and feel free to say hi in the comments. This is the Nerdy Dad, signing off.